You're tuned into Awani Review and I'm Saraya Mia. Let's talk about the fitness industry, including commercial gyms and boutique gyms. Though the industry has so much potential to grow, we cannot deny that some businesses could hit a bust if the movement control order, MCO, prolongs for another year. But will there be a light at the end of the tunnel? On the line is Ayman Asmawar, entrepreneur and the founder of Malaysia's first outdoor spin studio, Oxygen Cycle, to get his take on the topic. Thank you, Ayman, for joining Awani Review today. So, Ayman, Oxygen Cycle is less than one year old. It right. opened in the time of hardship, which is the first MCO. So, how prepared are you in general for this second lockdown? especially in terms of uh, maintaining payroll and also cash flow for your business? That's right. Um, good question. I, I think none of us in the industry uh, generally is prepared for a second MCO. Uh, you know, seeing the numbers were doing really well and then drastically it didn't do so well. But nonetheless, um, knowing that this is a normal crisis management that you probably have to be prepared for for any business in terms of uh, your overheads and uh, expectations and payroll, um, the only issue that we, we probably had to face was the fact that we were in the midst of expanding and how do we meet to the expectation and managing that um, expansion for everyone. Um, that's the only part that was holding us back um, slightly. But um, um, I believe that we, we've we already uh, occurred that this matter may, may come forward and uh, we already succumb to the chances and uh, resolve this um, as swiftly as possible. Okay. All right. So let's talk about the cluster, the COVID-19 cluster that affected boutique gyms, a couple of boutique gyms uh, very recently. So how can this affect your business and also the industry overall? And in the, in the future, when, when lockdowns start to ease, ease down, how will you convince the customers again? And, and would it actually have a permanent effect, Ayman? Yeah, wonderful. Um, really great question. Um, then again, uh, because we are boutique fitness and with fitness, um, there might be a possible uh, physical contact uh, with simple shake hands. Even though we're not a contact sport, we're actually a stationary uh, machine, which is a stationary bike. Um, but because it, we're clustered in the indoor, or even the outdoor setting, uh, the possible of, you know, uh, um, exchange of bacteria is there. Um, I think the best way for us to move forward into um, reopening or be able to function as smoothly as possible is to get the support from the public as well. I, I think when it comes to the situation with the pandemic, with anything uh, bacterial, it's not just from the business side to needs to resolve it. It's not just from the government side to resolve it, but it's also from the participation of the customers to understand um, the layers of um, the business is going through to to ensure security safety and all these protocols that also needs assurance coming from the customers as well to support and to understand the depth of responsibility that might succumb if they don't uh, understand um, the commitments upon arriving to such a space that it's an environment to ensure safety to everyone just like um, just like a hospital you know before you step into ICU it's either family, friends, uh, or close ones only, and the, the friends are not allowed in, and you still got to go through a form of sanitization, the proper gear before you step in. I think if we have a better understanding of, bar, of both part, uh, parties from this side onwards, I think we could be um, able to succumb uh, the current situation and um, have a better future in this. So I understand that you you said that the basic understanding of um, people in general or society of how important it is to follow SOPs and also to stay uh, mindful and know the risk that you are putting yourself at when you go outdoors to any any space and it doesn't have to be just a fitness space. So I, I agree to that one. Um, all right, Ayman, 2020, last year, was a strange year. Some call it metamorphosis. Some could ca call it 
whatever you want to call it, but it was definitely a strange year. So it was a survival of the fittest, but I do notice that I did notice that, um, for the fitness industry, it wasn't, especially the boutique gyms, it wasn't badly hit. Of course, I believe that there must have been a, a lot of um, struggles faced, especially due to the first MCO. Um, but there are even some that are just starting to open during the MCO, like yours. And then also now there's a lot of new, new ones. So how do you think this temporary pause is actually um, in, in affecting the industry? Oh, yeah. Um, it's, it's definitely affecting a lot, um, especially when your business model is based on numbers. Um, you know, and then you have a big responsibility of your overheads and your team members. Um, thus, uh, boutique gyms like, uh, like Oxygen Cycle, uh, myself, um, are not as highly affected because we are in the midst of growing. We worked around the SOPs from day one. And we're just trying to break up from the SOP and in terms of uh, expanding the numbers, uh, try to pivot into that, uh, believing that things will get better, you know, prepping for that. Um, but by prepping that, we realize that I, I guess the industry are, um, is not ready for that and uh, is due to the situation with, with, um, uh, with the COVID and uh, the bacteria and all the exchanges and um, lack of, of of commitment or being mindfulness possibility and uh, we have to consider that and um, I, I think that the business model or even the expenditure will always be self-evolving um, it's going to be a very weird uh, pace but I think this is where creativity will start to come in to understand what is the direction what's the intention in the end why are we really doing this is there a really need to do this is it based on you know, sustaining mental health, is it really a uh, demand for the public to to keep themselves healthy? Uh, keep, is it important to keep it outdoors so that people will always stay away from bacteria because the indoors might be highly contaminated? This, I think these are the type of questions that we need to ask ourselves as, as a boutique gym and um, we'll probably find the, um, the answer in that creativity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So speaking of creativity, um, it also goes hand in hand with change, right? So this industry has so much potential to grow or change for the future post pandemic. So Ayman, um, what do you think the future of boutique fitness will be in the coming couple of years? Good question. I mean, um, that I, I think that's a, a, a good question that I um, or myself from Oxygen wanted to keep it as a surprise which is part of the direction of where Oxygen is going. Um, the initial state before we went outdoors, we're trying, our big dream was to try to be able to be in everyone's home, meaning like a setup. Or for example, we can set up um, a small space of two to five or 10 packs uh, for every apartment out there, office building, so that people can have an access um, a big volume so that, you know, we, we centralize our recording in one location and then you, you'll get, you know, it's like another 7-Eleven. Hey, I want to go spin. Let, let's drop by to that, you know, just like a few meters away, pop in and you'll, you'll have a space for like 5, 10 and keep it in proximity of close range and still keep it digital. And I, I think that's, it's a world willing to explore. It's, it's, it seems very high risk, but you know, 2020 has taught us that nothing normal works anymore. You know, and um, it's letting go of fear and exploring is, is should be the way to go. And I think the most difficult part is making people around you understand, maybe partners and investors or even mm -hmm. government bodies. But um, I think this is a time for us to to move forward with these ideas before anyone else in the neighboring countries, because we actually have a chance to create a new business model right here. I love the optimism. And you also mentioned about digitalization. You know, it's it could be something new, in, in, especially in this fitness in, industry. Like the, the first MCO brought about a lot of live streaming, a lot of new innovation into the industry. So how, how do you personally apply the digitalization in the new norm? And mm. how will you sustain it post pandemic? That's a, that's a very solid question. Um, we did explore uh, roughly into it. Um, I, I guess I guess the biggest question is about maintaining that quality. You know, how far are you willing to invest in it? 
And um, if you see anything digital, um, maybe live cash, boutique fitness, or even going to Netflix, what, what captivates us into our phones and in the world of digital is quality. And um, maybe one thing that's lacking in the boutique fitness is the fact that none of us are really uh, production-based or film-based or you know digital digital educated. And I think this is where somewhere a, a point where we can explore to maintain this system, um, which if you think about it, it's much more um, sustainable in a business sense because your overheads is much more lesser, but you just have to invest a little bit more into education and setup. And I think that it's a great way to kind of like um, have an idea what the future may be, you know, uh, much more high quality content, uh, which is probably something that a lot of our experts have in Malaysia, but they just never had the time to have that platform. So mm -hmm. perhaps if we start putting our heads together and realize that, hey, maybe this is a chance for Malaysia to bring the creative side together and do something with fitness and be the um, Southeast Asia key of fitness and digital world. That'd be quite interesting too. And I think there's a big feature in that. It just, it takes more than one person to clap. And I think we need everyone to like collaborate on that idea. It sounds like a very interesting idea and um, definitely sounds like more jobs for a lot of people out there, more opportunities. So I hope that everything works well post pandemic during the MCO. And um, yeah, that's about the time that we have today. Thank you so much for joining us again, Ayman. And, Thank you um, for having me. Yeah, tune in again. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.